Hi, I'm Han Cayley. I am a sociology PhD student at Washington University in St. Louis. I was a professional in health equity for five years and completed a master's degree in another field. And one of the things that I've been very aware of in my work is that there are massively different amounts of social capital and knowledge about the university that various grad students have, and it makes a huge difference in your experience. Having worked in higher ed and having a ton of friends who either have gone through PhDs just ahead of me or who had finished PhDs by the time we started hanging out. So I have a ton of people that I've been able to lean on to ask questions and demystify the process, and it helps so much. And I'm keeping this process vlog partly to demystify the process for others and partly so that I can trace my experience over time. So I have finished my third month, which is my first semester. Um, overall vibes are really good. Um, it was a very challenging semester. I took too many classes. Um, I would recommend for sure don't take any more classes than your department recommends or requires your first term. Let yourself get in and get settled. I know a lot of people who've made the same mistake and when I realized that I was in too many classes, it was pretty scary. I wasn't sure how I would get through it. And part of getting through it was just accepting that I might not get perfect grades this term. Grades have not been released yet, but I think probably there will at least be one class that I will have gotten a B in, which in grad school is not ideal. But I also think it's going to be fine. Um, the classes that I anticipate possibly getting a lower grade in are not classes that I'm likely to teach and are not super core to my research. So I think it's going to be fine overall as long as I do better next term but I'm setting myself up really carefully to be able to do better next term and it's gonna be okay. One of the things that I've mentioned in several previous videos is that the vibes in this program are a lot better than in my previous program, in my master's program. And that has continued. And it's been really important, I think, um, being in a program where there's a lot of institutional support, both in terms of financial support and in terms of feeling like I could go talk to basically anyone in the department if I needed to, and that I would be pretty well assured of getting support and assistance just absolutely cannot, there's no price on that. Um, I felt very isolated in my previous program in part because I felt that my values were very out of step with my program. Um, there was a lot of material that was pretty racist, um, pretty hostile to women, pretty hostile to LGBT people, trans people in particular. And it's not that that's been entirely absent in this program, but I think there's been a lot less. And when I have run into it, I've found that other students generally are on the same page. And so even when things come up, it feels like the grad students are more or less on a team about it. And it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel isolating in the same way that it did previously. Um, there's also been a lot less in terms of in-class microaggressions, um, a lot less misgendering a lot less um there was just a lot my master's program was a disaster so you know in that in that program there would be things like lectures about how bisexual people are just confused um whereas this is like i don't think that i would have really thought that that specific methodological choice was like fully appropriate and I would have liked to see this more in conversation with this his but like it's a whole different it's a different level <laughs> um so that's really nice another thing that I've spoken about in previous videos is 
the fact that I felt a lot of pressure, especially being in so many courses, to work constantly. Um, this feeling of going from saying, I'm only going to work 40 hours a week, I'm going to work, you know, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and then walk away. Um, and how that didn't really happen for me. <laughs> and I would work longer and longer days, still feel like I wasn't really getting enough done. And then also it really impacted my sleep quality and realizing um, last month that that just wasn't sustainable. And I got a lot of support really from my therapist and also from my program in setting more appropriate boundaries. And I think by the end of the term, I wasn't exactly back to like, I only work 40 hours a week, but I was definitely back to being done for the day and putting it down and really walking away from it. And that was a better choice. So I think that I've set myself up like I said, a lot better to be able to both succeed in the next term and also to keep more appropriate boundaries. Financially, things are not awesome, but they're okay. This is the last month or the last paycheck before my pay increase goes into effect, which will be really nice. Um, I've started working with a doctor to try to identify some of the body stuff that's happening, which means that there will be tests and potentially treatments that could be expensive. Um, my car also needs work, so here's places you can help. But it is feasible. It's uh, working well enough. I am getting from month to month without being completely out of money or food, uh, which is a lot more than a lot of grad students can say, but also not an appropriate level of functioning for world-class scholars, which is the current deal. Relatedly, there is a UC, University of California, strike for almost all of their academic unionized staff, um, grad students, postdocs, uh, graders, that sort of thing. Uh, are all on strike right now and they deserve a huge raise because prices are absolutely unbelievable to live in California and their contracts require that they accept basically the amount of money that's calculated based on a half-time workload but their contracts indicate that they can't take other jobs so they are trapped in half of what would be a livable wage by these contracts and they're asking for more and they deserve it. So if you can raise your voice about that, that would be awesome. Uh, it's so cold. I've started to try to walk more and lift weights more, but it's very cold outside, which is uh, very unpleasant and also rough on my joints. Um, I finally went to a doctor, a basic intake appointment, routine checkup, head to tail sort of exam took two and a half hours. Um, and I've been referred to four specialists for additional testing, which I have mixed feelings about. It's gonna be a lot of time and effort and stress and invasive stuff, but, um, it's possible that my current chronic illness diagnosis is not accurate and that a more accurate diagnosis would mean better quality of life. So hopefully that is what going down that path will mean. Um, and in the meantime, at least I've started. But I am definitely in a lot better condition now both physically and mentally than I was at this point in my master's degree because the level of stress is very different. The academic load is much, much more demanding, but I'm not being subject to the same degree of either direct harassment kind of stress or the sort of moral injury that I was experiencing in my master's degree. So 
that is definitely night and day and I'm much better off and people who are in my life who are close to me have observed the same thing that even though I'm very stressed I, I've been very stressed about finishing final assignments and about feeling overwhelmed with coursework it's the sort of stress that I signed up for when I wanted to go to grad school like I wanted to work really hard about reading and writing and I'm fine with that um, and it's not the other kind, which is harder for me to tolerate. Also, in the last video, I mentioned being nervous about being able to access medications on a continued basis. I did actually run out of medication this month, but only for, I think, two days. And then I was able to get a refill and I will be able to continue accessing my prescriptions in the future. So very happy about that. Um, that problem is resolved and off my plate. Uh, I still haven't ever heard back from the disability office. So I think I'm just going to have to restart that process completely. In terms of social life, I haven't had much of one because I have been doing reading and writing all of the time. But I think that building relationships with my cohort and with other grad students is going really well. Um, I talked hypothetically about hanging out with some people, both in my department and not in my department. And I think that's an important first step. I think realistically speaking, I'm doing a better job of networking than being friends, but that that's okay. And I would say that I'm friends with my cohort, which not everybody is, so that's working. My short-term goal is to fuck around for a few weeks, um, which is great. I love that. About a month from now, I will be going into my second term and I've got a few tasks that I need to do between now and then, but I'm really done with everything that has to happen. Um, I finished all of my coursework. I finished all of the sort of assorted paperwork that goes along with coursework. I completed a major fellowship application and basically the only thing that I need to do is like next week I need to email some people and make sure that they send in letters of recommendation on time. And sometime between like January 5th and January 15th, I need to poke another person to make sure that they do some paperwork that needs to happen on my behalf. Uh, and that's about it. So everything else between now and then is going to really focus on getting through the sub-zero temperatures of next week and uh, art. I'm going to do a lot of art, relaxing and really only checking in with my research projects. If I feel particularly inspired or interested, um, I'm doing some reading that's just been on my list, some things that I'm just interested in. This morning I got up and sort of checked in on some ongoing research projects just to like, feel like I was still connected with it, but it turned out I didn't have anything immediately productive to do and nothing was really calling to me and so that was it. I just sort of looked at everything and went, yep, that's the stuff. And that really kind of satisfied the immediate desire and I went and played video games. So that's my short-term goal is really just to sort of vibe. And for next term, my, my biggest goal, I guess, is to maintain a more functional orientation towards school to maintain a more stable schedule um, and to get back into a schedule that incorporates lifting in a more routine way. Um, I, I think I have some application deadlines next semester as well, but I don't have them in my head yet because it's not time. Um, I'll know that next month. <laughs> Um, I'm also, I'm starting to get a clearer sense of what my thesis and dissertation work is. 
And so I'm hoping that one of the papers, at least one of the papers that I work on next semester as a term paper will make a significant contribution towards either my thesis or dissertation. That's not normal for people in their first year. That is um, something that I'm able to do because I came in with an unusually developed research plan and I've, I've got a lot more research experience so I know more about how to design a project. But because I have that, um, I'm hoping to leverage that into kind of getting through the dissertation process as efficiently as is practical. And one way that I'm doing that is looking at what would be foundation pieces that would really make sense um, towards that and how can I be gearing my term papers towards that. I think two of my term papers this term out of my four classes really did that for me and that's great. I think if I can get one or maybe two to do that for me again next term, that would be ideal. I would also like to put more time into content creation next term as part of my more balanced plan. Long term, I think I would like to plan to graduate ahead of normative time. This is something that I've been thinking about throughout the semester. Um, normative time, meaning the typical time to degree in your discipline program. Normative time in my program is six years. That is theoretical because I'm in a new program and so no one has actually graduated, which means no one has graduated in six years or more or less than six years. There is a six year plan. I think I had started to think about maybe I'm not going to need the whole six years already. And then I had a meeting with a professor that I have a lot in common with research interest wise and talked to him about my research. And he commented, oh, so you'll be out of here in three years. And this was a compliment and a joke, but also it kind of did signal to me um, that I, you know, the the amount of preparation and the amount of clarity that I have about what I plan to do and how much experience in that area I already have is going to shape how long that's going to take me to do. I don't think three years is a realistic expectation. And honestly, I don't think that I would want to do what it would take to graduate in three years. I don't think that on a disability level, that's practical. But it might not take six years. It might not take five years. I think, I think four or five is potentially feasible. And I'm starting to think about what it would look like to explore that more explicitly with my advisor and see what would it look like to plan for that. One thing that goes into that is you don't actually have to be completely finished with your dissertation to go on the job market. And so part of what I would be looking at is what would it look like for me to complete dissertation travel, dissertation data collection, and a major portion of the analysis so that I can have a significant amount of writing done and be going onto the job market in roughly four years. So that would give me the opportunity to, if I didn't get offered a job that cycle, work for another year, apply for another year. Often people don't go onto the job market until they are about a year out from finishing their dissertation. But I've also known people in my discipline who have gone onto the job market a little earlier because they were hot shit and get hired in good jobs. And the difference between what a grad student gets paid and what a first year especially a first year tenure track professor gets paid is so phenomenally huge that if I can get to that stage practically and without sacrificing the completion of the dissertation, it might make sense for me, given my publication history, given my goals and given my health to prioritize that over doing a dissertation that is more ambitious, uh, more involved, 
harder to fund because I can do that same research as a professor with an R1. Like if I think I can get a job, then better to get it and also get paid better. This term, one of the things that I did was apply for a massive fellowship, which would, if I received it, uh, it would increase my felt income by about 15% for three years. So that would be a very significant felt difference. And if I took that fellowship, if I received it, I would have to agree not to do any additional work. So I don't know what that would mean for my content creation, whether that would mean that I just needed to like shut down my Patreon or if that even counts. I will find out in March. So I'm going to continue doing things until March, until I hear. It's a really competitive fellowship. So I have, I will say if, if it were chosen at random, my chances would be around 1.5%. Um, I think that I'm a pretty good candidate, but I'm also earlier in the process than most people are when they apply. So there's pluses and minuses and we'll just, we'll just see. Um, we'll just see. <laughs> but one of the things that that did was it forced me to create a research plan. It forced me to write out a, I think, two page proposition of everything that I will study and research during my graduate studies and justify it as in relation to, to my dissertation. So if I were to write my thesis today, it would be about how health equity problems at the level of healthcare get introduced, institutionalized and maintained with a particular interest on interplay between universities and clinics and universities and uh, state or state funded institutions like the military and museums. One of the things I want to look at is dissertations because most papers are done pretty independently, but dissertations have to be defended. They're not just reviewed. So there's a lot of institutional politicking that goes into it. And we can learn about institutional politics by what dissertations get promoted, uh, succeed get through and which ones do not successfully defend. And the dissertation itself, I want to look at practices of communities that are excluded from formal care by the processes of these institutional exclusions and how we can learn from an institutional perspective from those extra institutional systems to do better. Um, also, I've just realized I never actually said this. Behind me are all of the physical hard copy books that I read this term. 